Artificial intelligence has been slowly introduced to our society from unlocking your phone with your face, personalizing your feed on social media, to using digital voice assistants. But how will AI impact our future? The former president of Google China, now the CEO of Cinovation Ventures and best-selling author Kai Fu Lee, joins us to discuss his new collection of short stories co-written with Chen Chu Fan called AI 2041, a blend of fiction and nonfiction, imagining the future of artificial intelligence and how it could shape our world for the better or worse. Welcome to the show. Thanks so much for joining us. You've written that, quote, we often overestimate what technologies can do in five years and underestimate what they will be able to do in 20. So where do you think that we are in our understanding of AI and the impact that it'll have on both our, our short-term as well as long-term future? Uh, well, Lindsay, I think we're just at the very beginning of the AI revolution. Uh, we are right now seeing AI already beating humans in playing games, in reading radiology, in diagnosing many kinds of human uh, illnesses, and in scientific endeavors like protein folding. This is going to ex increase exponentially. Um, my, my day job is investing in high-tech companies, and we are seeing very powerful robots, autonomous vehicle, drug discovery uh, coming out in the next three to five years. And if you extrapolate, as um, I did in the book, to uh, 2041, I think we will see a pervasive use of robotics from industrial, commercial to uh, household use. And uh, humans will largely not be driving anymore. And uh, there will be jobs taken from us in the factories. But on the flip side, we won't have to do routine work anymore. The idea of humans not driving anymore, that, that makes me a little bit nervous. In your book, you discuss seven AI developments that could change how we live and work. Talk about just a few of those and the positive impact that they could have. Uh, sure. Uh, well, I think we spend about 9% of our time driving, and just saving that time will allow us to use the time we have in the car uh, to uh, productively. The, and the accidents will come down dramatically, estimated about 90% of human fatalities will be gone. Um, also, I think in robotics, we can look forward to household, record, uh, household um, uh, robots that will cook for us and clean for us, and really taking away our uh, need to do routine work. Uh, AI today can optimize for internet giants um, in, to help them make more money, to show us the videos we want to watch. But in the future, AI can become smarter and more uh, knowledgeable about our long-term needs and learn to make us more knowledgeable and happier and become our uh, com companion, leading to a truly symbiotic human AI uh, symbiosis. Now that I might invest in one of those robots who cook and clean. In your view, what are some of the common misconceptions about artificial intelligence and any potential dangers that it could pose and, and whether any of those fears are actually warranted? Sure. I think the uh, greatest misconception is that AI is human-like and it will have human desires and emotions and to control us and hurt us and fall in love with us, all those good and bad things. But AI is, in fact, right now just watching so much data, uh, a AI driver will have driven a billion miles and an AI surgeon will have um, had the experience of a million surgeries. And no wonder it's better than people, but it's largely just watching uh, data and taught by human on what to optimize and does so in a better way than people. That said, there are still a lot of dangers that are real. If used um, in incorrectly or um, maliciously, AI can be used uh, at our expense. We all know about internet companies that potentially can uh, use AI to get us addicted to content, to make us more extremist in our views. And such, uh, such efforts, I think, are um, understandable in some sense because they are commercially oriented and need to make money. But I think in the longer term, uh, there will be better apps, better internet uh, applications that look after our long-term interests, that develop content um, in ways that make us better. And I think that will be a way out of that uh, problem. Also, we hear about AI sometimes is uh, unfair or biased. And that can be largely fixed by technology, by just having software uh, used by AI programmers that watch for balance of data and alert when there might be issues with respect to um, uh, uh, fairness. 
So I think a lot of the issues can be solved by technology. We haven't had enough chance for the technologists to solve those problems. The same as when internet first were, was connected to PC, there were viruses all over the place, but given five or 10 years, the technologists come up with ways such as antivirus software. And I'm convinced that given five or 10 years, technology solutions along with regulations will keep the AI issues under control. And finally, this book is written in a unique way, combining both fiction as well as nonfiction. Why did you decide to write in that format, and what challenges did it pose? Uh, because I see so much misconception about AI, and a lot of it is caused by people feeling this is rocket science. They're intimidated by the complexities of technology. So uh, uh, I think writing it in a way that is engaging and even entertaining uh, can reach out to everybody who wants to know more about AI. Uh, they can just read the stories uh, written by my co-author, Chen Chiu Fan, who is an award-winning science fiction writer, uh, or read everything, his stories, followed by my analysis for a fuller understanding. I, I hope this approach uh, can lead to a better, fuller understanding of what AI can do, what problems there are, and how they might be solved uh, so people won't be looking at AI and feeling uh, fear or paranoia or this is a negative technology. Uh, I hope to really uh, express my strong belief that all technologies uh, are fundamentally neutral. Uh, they can be used by good or bad people, but over time, all great technologies like electricity and internet uh, have been enhanced by technological uh, solutions that address the downside, and there are a lot more good people than bad people, so we benefit greatly uh, from uh, electricity and internet. And I think in the future, when we look back 20 years from now, we will also see that we are uh, unbelievably uh, beneficiaries uh, from the AI revolution. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Really some interesting insight there. Kai Fuli, author of the new book, AI 2041, is now available wherever books are sold. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.